Is Crayola loaded word? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be yes. Um, absolutely, and I mean, and I mean, I've, I've said that certainly in New Orleans, it, the meaning changes every two or three blocks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can mean any number of people. In, in, in this book that happens to be under my hand, uh, there's a four-page definition of it that that takes on everything, including in Webster's dictionary, I think you know, definition E or F or something are the Inuit people in an Alaska are sometimes <laughs> known as Creoles. Wow. So it, it's just, it's, it's a word that has taken on a very narrow meaning in the United States. It's a particularly Southern Louisiana meaning in the United States. But if you open it up to the world, you'll find that there are certainly Creolized foods and dishes everywhere. I mean, the food of the Ile Maurice, the, um, the Indian Ocean Islands that used to be French. Mm -hmm. The French consider it Creole, as do the folks who live there. It's, you know, like Cuisine Creole, if you buy a French cookbook that talks about Creole food, you will find recipes from that part of the world as well. Um, certainly in the Caribbean, you find the, uh, the Cuisine Creole of Martinique and Guadeloupe and arguably Haiti, although their cuisine is different. But then you find the comidas criollas in the Spanish-speaking world. Uh, you'll find the comidas chinas y criollas in Cuba, which is those, all those restaurants that used to be Chinese Creole mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll find they had one uh, of those in New York. Oh, there are lots of them in New York. <laughs> yeah. There was a period yeah. where where all of the sort of local takeouts, the cuchifrito places, were, you know, cuchifritos and comidas chinas y yeah, criollas. Yeah, I thought that you know. was pretty interesting. And it was, you know, but we forget about all of the different kinds of folks who've gone into this mix that becomes Creole somewhere. I think the most interesting thing that I found about Creole, certainly there's the black-white, or Creole's black or Creole's white, that's a whole nother issue. I found a, a wonderful definition in an, a dictionary of Caribbean usage that talked about how certain terminology sort of ebbed and flowed throughout the, you know, the four centuries or the five centuries, three centuries three and a half centuries, um, that talked about how Creole might have originally been used to apply to whites, but then it became applied to blacks, and then it lost its, its sort of favor with whites, but then it became applied to, and so you get this mm -hmm. sort of curve. But the kicker at the end of the definition was what I thought was wonderful, which was that it was a word that as recently as I think 1996, etymologists found in Garcia Lasso La In El Inca, who wrote in Peru in the, fifth, the 16th century, actually, the 16th century, that it is a word used by the Africans in Peru, who knew, um, <laughs> to describe their children. Because to the Africans who were in Peru, their children were inferior in that they had not been born in the motherland, Africa. Really? And therefore, they referred to them as criollos. It, the etymology comes from the Latin, which means criar, to create, and uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Because, I mean, how would the Africans have been using something with Latin etymology? But it, it's, you know, it's just, it's oh. a fascinating word <laughs> that's really loaded. It really <laughs> is. <laughs>